Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Top 5 Total War video. This time covering the Top 5 Cheesiest Strategies in Total War Warhammer. Now in case you're not familiar with what cheese even means, it, generally speaking, it's utilizing unbalanced and broken game mechanics, oversights by the developers to get pretty interesting results, let's just put it at that. So with that being said, let's jump in now to number 5. Coming in at number 5 is Corner Camping. It's not something that's unique to Total War Warhammer, but it can be used to very strong effect. It is a very cheesy strategy. So, what's involved with corner camping? Well basically, if you're up against a numerically superior force that perhaps has a lot of cavalry, and you've got a lot of missile units, then maybe it's best to try to find some way to protect your missile units, and oftentimes your front line is just too thin to be able to properly defend them. So you can get an imaginary front line in order to protect them. By putting your units in a corner, the enemy army is completely unable to maneuver around your forces, allowing your missile units the safety that they need to get the full number of kills, allowing you to turn the tide as long as your front line holds. Now this strategy really does work best with high morale factions such as the dwarves or maybe even the vampire counts, which they don't have any missile units so that's a bit of a moot point. But this sort of strategy probably would work very badly for factions like Bretonia, whose front line is prone to routing but then coming back into the battlefield. If you rout, then your forces run off the battlefield and they're as good as dead. So therefore, this strategy isn't really viable for all factions, but it certainly is viable for most factions. And that's why it gets the number 5 spot. Anyway, let's now move on to number 4. Coming in at number 4 is a strategy for the campaign map that's particularly cheesy, which is sacking the same settlement over and over again before you eventually occupy it. So, this is something that works really well in the early game for leveling up your lords and heroes at virtually no cost and time to you. Very simple to do. So generally speaking, in the campaign, you don't want to expand too quickly, at least not at the beginning, because if you expand too quickly with your settlements underdeveloped, you're never going to be able to defend them. So holding onto a small province, not meeting a lot of people, and then just focusing on the small area that you start off with can actually be very effective. The problem is, once you've defeated your initial enemy, your legendary lord might be just be sitting on his hands doing nothing. So picking a, a small faction, a small city, and just sacking it over and over again, because every turn they'll repair it, because it's their last city. And all you'll be going up against is a small half-strength garrison. What it will do is level up your legendary lord while you're not looking to do anything else. Now, the thing is as well, is that once you're ready to get your legendary lord back into the fray, when you're ready to expand again, you could always recruit your second army and get it leveled up by you know, hitting the, the, the punching bag settlement. This is one of the most effective strategies that I use in my campaigns to really power level up my uh, my legendary lords. I've often found that leaving behind lords that just sack a city over and over again can overtake my initial legendary lord in levels up because he's getting a consistent, reliable amount of experience, whereas a legendary lord might be hunting down an army for you know, several turns playing silly buggers. So that's why this is getting the number four slot. Highly recommend this cheese, very, very effective. And let's move on now to number three. Coming in at number three is some good old siege cheese. It's pretty simple and most people already know how this works. You just take your army, put it over to one side of the, of the siege map, take out one or two of the towers that could possibly shoot you. This particular map here is especially useful for this kind of cheese because there's this big blank spot here where there aren't any initial towers. We've already taken out this tower here, which wouldn't be able to shoot us in this area anyway. Now, there's some factions that do better with the siege cheese, some factions that aren't able to use the siege cheese at all, like vampire accounts because they don't have access to missile units. But there's various other things that the, uh, that the vampire accounts can do. Almost every faction can utilize this siege. Now there's three things you can do once you've reached this sort of stalemate here where the AI is just going to sit there and basically stare at you. Three things you can do to start wiping them out. So first thing, you can continue using your artillery and bomb over the wall. Another thing you can do is pop down magic and they're not going to do anything about it. And then the third thing is missile units. And if you've got dragons or anything like that, you can, you know, blow fire on them. 
Some factions will have various degrees of missile units that may try to shoot at you, but it's also very easy to, to waste their ammo, which I guess we'll get to soon. So that's the siege cheese. Very easy to do. Makes sieging uh, uh, superior enemies out of their hidey holes very easy. And that's why it gets the number three spot. Let's now move on to number two. Coming in at number two is the one unit army spam. So this is quite simply where you take one unit that's very powerful and make it your entire army composition. So in this particular case here, playing as Vampire Coast Faction, we've got nothing but Necrofex Colossus, which are probably the most powerful unit in this game at the moment. So the benefit of this is by only using one or two army, uh, one or two units in your army composition, you're allowing your legendary lord to only focus the the red skill tree just on those particular units, so that you don't have to have you know two units of this, two units of that, and you don't have to have some units that just aren't boosted at all, allowing you to put your points into other things. Now, even if you don't boost these units, they're very, very good. As you can see here, the balance of power is already rocketed in our favor, and the battle hasn't really even begun yet. They're just beginning the artillery phase. Now, this particular unit is, is an artillery unit that's also very good in melee, and that's what makes this unit you know, so powerful. Now, it's not the only one in the game. There are some other factions that have units like this that are so powerful and versatile in every situation. Another one is the Lizardman's Stegodon. Not the ancient Stegodon, the regular Stegodon, the tier 4 one, because it's got a ballista on its back and they're decent in melee. They're not as good in melee as the ancient Stegodon, but once you take into consideration they get off like 4 or 5 shots before the enemy gets close, maybe even more than that, they'll have weakened the enemy considerably without taking any damage themselves. The other one is the Hippogriff Knights for Bretonia. Um, I didn't know about this one until, until recently, but it's very, very powerful. It's best also if you couple it with a life damsel so that you can heal blob them and you just utilize the, the sheer mass or mass flying charge of these units to hit and run. Don't get caught up into a big blob because they don't do so well just in melee. It's all about the initial charge, breaking the units, get back, getting back up and then coming back down without the enemy being able to do anything about it. The AI really does just stall when it looks at these army compositions. It just has no idea. It doesn't expect you to bring such a cheesy army. The AI sometimes brings semi-cheesy army, but not quite this much. Now, there's other factions that do have amazing units that you can use as your only army composition. For example, the steam tanks. But in my opinion, the first three that I mentioned are the, the best three that you can get in uh, Total War Warhammer. And that's why it's getting the number two slot. You can use this army to pretty much beat any army composition that you'll go up against on the campaign map on any difficulty without any real trouble. So let's now move on to the number one spot. Coming in at number one is the Wasting Enemy Ammunition Cheese. Now this works specifically well against the High Elves due to the fact that they don't have guns and they've got the best archers in the game, arguably. Either them or the Wood Elves. Now, there's a number of things that you need to have in order for this cheese to work. You need to make sure that you're the attacker. If you're the defender, the AI will not sit on the hill and just waste its ammunition. They'll charge at you and you won't be able to utilize a Lord to, to waste their, the enemy ammunition. The other thing that you need is a, a Lord or Hero that's, or just a single entity unit really, that's small and fast enough to be able to dodge missiles. The smaller and faster, the better. Also, missile resistance doesn't go to waste either. Now, winning battles isn't just about killing enemy units in Total War Warhammer, and the balance of power is reflected by that. If, if you want to inflict the army loss penalty, a lot of the times all you need to do is think about getting this enough in your favor. So to do that, there are some things you need to keep in mind. That the balance of power is not just affected by how many men are on the battlefield and how much health they have and their stats, but also how much ammunition the archers have. Which means if you keep an eye on that balance of power, you should start to see it increase in our favor. I'll speed this up as well because this goes on for a little while. So there's a lot of enemy armies, a lot of armies that you'll be going up against in this game that'll have missile units. There's only a ver very few that don't. Now, guns is not... It's not so easy to dodge gunfire, but there's not that many gun units in the game. Most of the missile units in the game are archers, and these are the best archers, I think, in the game you can go up against. The other ones probably arguably way watchers. So you can see here the balance of power. It's already in a it's medium in a there we go, it's just moved in our favor. It was moving faster than I could explain it. 
And so what we've done in this situation is that you've taken an, a, uh, an army that would have absolutely stomped us on the approach, and we've made it so that now we've actually got a chance, we're in not more than just a chance, we can actually properly win here. We've got the advantage because we're not no longer going to get shredded on the approach. So this is a really effective cheese to use when the enemy is very powerful. You know they've got a lot of missile units. You make the attack. Know full well you want to waste their ammo. Make the attack and win. Because once they're out of ammo, you've got the advantage. So that's my top five list. Let me know what you think. Is there a cheese that you think I missed or that should have been on this, on this list? Do keep in mind though, I'm not referring to any multiplayer cheese, although some of these I'm sure would be effective in multiplayer. That's not what my top five lists are about. I mostly just focus on single player stuff. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. See you next time, fuckers.